What is going on, Bucks fans? Evan Wanish here, back at you with yet another Tampa Bay Buccaneers video. And now, training camp is finally open. So, with that, I thought we would review an article that I wrote for Bucks Nation just a few days ago about training camp battles and potential battles uh, for certain spots on the football team. Training camp is here. It's, it's kind of hard to believe that we're at this point already. It seems like just a few weeks ago uh, that the, the draft was here, and we were like, man, training camp seems so far away. But nope, it's, it is open. Uh, the Buccaneers' first practice was today. Uh, this video is being recorded on Wednesday the 26th, so their first practice was today. Uh, obviously, we'll have a, a bunch of content regarding training camp out on this channel as well. But without further ado, let's get right into the article. I, I didn't list all of them, not every single battle. There's going to be more like insignificant ones. Heck, th there's even technically a kicker battle uh, between uh, you know Chase McLaughlin and Rodrigo Blankenship. So uh, I, I didn't list that, but I did list some of the more obvious and more notable ones. And of course, we're going to start off with the quarterback battle. I'm not going to get too, too much into this because it's been talked about ad nauseum pretty much. But you got Baker Mayfield. You got Kyle Trask. Right now, and I even noted in the article, and you can go check out this article on BucksNation.com as well as my other written work on BucksNation.com. I noted in this article that I think Baker Mayfield has the upper hand. Like I, th I think it's pretty clear that right now Baker Mayfield has the upper hand in this competition against Kyle Trask. However, I still think that the Buccaneers, look, Todd Bowles and Jason Light, they're going to put the best – uh, 22 guys out there, you know, when, when it comes to week one in Minnesota. So if Baker Mayfield goes out and doesn't play well in training camp and in the preseason and Kyle Trask plays better than him, I know, like, I, I think the Buccaneers could have a pretty tough decision. Like, I, I don't think the decision would be that straightforward. Now, like I said, I do think it take, it would take, uh, Baker Mayfield to do pretty bad and Kyle Trask to step up, you know, considerably uh, and play much better than him for him to overtake that spot, I think. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. If I had to bet, I'd say Baker Mayfield's probably your starting quarterback, you know, when the season rolls around. But I, I do think that there's a chance Kyle Trask has. So it's a battle everybody's going to be watching. Uh, it's a battle we're going to be talking about the entire training camp, the entire preseason, and heck, maybe even a little bit into the regular season as well. But I wanted to note that there. The next one is wide receiver depth. And the Buccaneers lost Scotty Miller, obviously signed with the Atlanta Falcons. They didn't resign Julio Jones. So there's a, a little bit of wide receiver depth there, a, a concern that they needed to replace. They have Devin Tompkins on the roster. They have Kalen Geiger on the roster. Both guys have are young players that have experience uh, in this offense. Well, not really in this particular offense, but with the Buccaneers. And then they also signed David Moore, who pretty familiar with Dave Canales' system in Seattle, uh, knows what the expectations are, are going to be. So familiar with Dave Canales there. And I think that that helps. So. Um, you know, their top three spots are locked up. You got Mike Evans, Chris Gowan, and, and, and obviously uh, Gage. So um, you're looking at that fourth, fifth spot. If they carry six, like maybe I, I would think that sixth guy would definitely have to contribute on special teams in some way, which if you're in Devin Tompkins' case, he was, you know, he had a little bit of return ability uh, last season. So I think that helps him. But uh, as far as this group, I think you're looking at guys like Tompkins, Moore, Geiger, and I even know Trey Palmer. I'm a big Trey Palmer fan. Loved the pick when they made it in the sixth round. I think he's got, like, I, I couldn't believe he was there in the sixth round. So I think Trey Palmer has a real shot to make some noise in this training camp. I, I really do, really do. So uh, the Buccaneers have a lot of open spots in the receiver room outside of those top three guys, Evans, Gowan, Gage. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I I think you're going to be looking at not probably not all, not David Moore, Kalen Geiger, Devin Tompkins, and Trey Palmer. I don't think they all make the teams. I don't think the Buccaneers are going to be carrying seven wide receivers, but I can see them carrying six. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see who those six are. So then we also move on to the starting guard spot. We talked about wide receiver depth there. Now we're talking about another starting position. 
Uh, the, and I note that they kind of have a log jam right now on the interior because Ryan Jensen coming back healthy. That means Robert Hansey is going to slide back over to guard. With that, you got Matt Filer. Cody Mock, who was their second round pick. Nick Lever, who played well last year. Aaron Stinney, who's returning uh, from a major injury. And then Robert Hainsey. So that's five guys that are going to be competing for two spots. So somebody's going to be the odd man out there. I know I mentioned Stinney as one of the guys maybe on the roster bubble. And I think he could be, depending on how he responds to that injury. And the other reason is because of the depth they have on the interior. Like, I do think that matters. So uh, we'll see what happens with the guard spots. Uh, I think a guy, Matt Filer, uh, the you know, that veteran presence, I think he uh, could have an edge for one of the spots right now. And then it's up for grabs. I, I think Robert Hainsey played well, uh, filling in for, for Ryan Jensen last year. Uh, and then we'll see how he can perform at guard. Nick Lever, I thought, played well uh, filling in um, for, for Luke Gedeke when Luke Gedeke was taken out of the lineup uh, due to injury and, and performance partially. But I, I do think this is going to be one of the more interesting battles because it's it's a starting it's a starting job. And right now, I don't think the Buccaneers have either guard spot like etched in stone on who's going to be the starter on week one. So we'll have to wait and see on that. And then the final one that I note was who will be the third corner. The Buccaneers lost Sean Murphy Bunting. Uh, he signed the Tennessee Titans. They were able to bring back Jamel Dean, but they lost Sean Murphy Bunting. There's now a hole. You got Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean at the top. Behind them, though, is a lot of question marks. I note that Zion McCollum, last year's fourth-round pick, the Buccaneers uh, traded up and gave up a 2023 fourth-round pick to go get him. So clearly that they thought highly of Zion McCollum. Played special teams for the most part in 2022. Was good at that when he was thrown into the starting defense. He didn't fare as well. I think they're hoping he takes a step forward and maybe takes the reins of that third corner spot. But regardless, if it's not him, you got guys like D. Delaney um, and I, like like Anthony Chesley, and then I note Josh Hayes as well, uh, the sixth round pick out of Kansas State, very versatile player. I think could play safety or, or nickel if you need him to. But either way, like you, you read these names, they're not the most experienced or the most notable names out there. So I think the Buccaneers are going to be making sort of a sacrifice with their third corner spot and just saying, hey, like we hope one of these guys bloom but like it's okay if they don't because there's going to be an experience along that that position and i think this season is going to be a lot of that sort of okay we're trying to compete but at the same time we're trying to see what we have with a lot of the younger players like as i am a column can he perform well as that third corner? Can a guy like Anthony Chesley be a diamond in the rough? Can Josh Hayes be a steal in the sixth round? So I think that's sort of what they're looking at. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a solid answer for the third corner spot. Hey, maybe they add a veteran who come come week one. Who knows? That, that could certainly happen. Injuries are going to happen during camp and preseason. Who knows what's going to happen there? But I do think third corner is an interesting battle to watch because it's involves a lot of inexperienced players with potential but at the same time like i said not a lot of experience so let me know what you guys think let me know what your most anticipated training camp battle is i'm sure most likely going to be the quarterbacks or, or something like that but if you don't you know let me know why why is why is the quarterback one you know your most anticipated training camp battle or if it's another one let me know what it is and, and why that is and also you know let me know who you think wins i didn't really make predictions on who i thought was going to win uh you know these particular battles but i would love to hear your guys thoughts please don't forget to like share and subscribe and talk soon